Today, we're going to talk all about cells. We're going to describe the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And at the end of this video, you're going to compare and contrast these two groups and you're going to be an expert. But before we get into these two types of cells, let's start by defining what is a cell. So you can see some examples of different cells we're gonna be covering in this video, but a cell is the smallest unit that can perform all of the processes necessary for life. I always tell my students that cells are the building blocks for all life. So let's imagine tiny Legos that when we build them together and they work in unison, they create this amazing being, the organism. So those cells are carrying out all of these really, really important life processes and they're helping that organism survive. All right, so when did we actually discover cells? This is what we are going to call cell theory. As scientists become better and more knowledgeable and more advanced with their technologies, they made some scientific discoveries about cells. And we find throughout history that advancements in technology is often one of the ways that we discover new scientific ideas and uncover new things we hadn't seen before. And that's the case with cells. In 1665, Robert Hooke creates a microscope that allows him to look at samples under his microscope. And there had been microscopes before this point, but this microscope was able to allow him to see inside of the plant sample at a microscopic level. And he examined a cork sample, which is from a cork tree. So he was looking at a plant. And when he looks at that plant, he notices that there are these little boxes. And in Latin, he names these things cells, which is Latin for little boxes or little rooms, because that's what he sees on his microscope. Now, until the 1600s, cells were not discovered because we didn't have the microscopes that were able to show us and uncover what was within each organism at a cellular microscopic level. However, over these next 200 years, we had some major scientific discoveries and scientists start to create better, more refined microscopes that can go even further and magnify even better. And they were able to summarize some key things that we now know about cells. And these things together we call cell theory. And there are three really important parts to cell theory. Cell theory states that all organisms we know are made of one or more cells. Now notice that it says one or more cells. There are single celled organisms, which we're gonna talk about in this video. The next part of cell theory says that the cell is the basic unit of all living things, meaning that at the smallest, cells are the thing that build every organism on planet Earth that is alive. And then all cells come from existing cells. We talk about in life science how cells are created through mitosis and meiosis in reproduction. But all cells have to come from a cell that already exists. So those are the three things that scientists were able to summarize after these 200 years of scientific discoveries, which were all fueled by these microscopes and the improvements in that technology. All right, so let's get to the important part of today's video, which is, what are the different types of cells and what do we know about them now after all of these scientific discoveries? You're looking at prokaryotes right now and some different examples that we're gonna discuss. A prokaryote is a single celled organism that does not have a nucleus or membrane bound organelles. We're going to get into all of the organelles of the cells in another video and all of the things that they do for us, but Organelles are tiny little organs within the cell that carry out really important functions, just like the organs in our body. And prokaryotes don't have a membrane surrounding their organelles. They also don't have a nucleus. And we know that the nucleus is like the brain of the cell. Uh, prokaryotes are a lot more simple and they're single-celled, which means that one cell makes up their entire body. 
which means that their life is also limited to that one cell. Because if the cell dies, well, that is them as the organism. So let's talk about their characteristics. We said that they're single celled. So one cell, you can also say that as unicellular. They have no nucleus and they have no membrane bound organelles. The two types of prokaryotes are archaea and archaea are extremophiles. And extremophiles means that they live in very extreme locations. We have methanogens, thermophiles, and these two types of archaea live in places that have lots of methane gas, which most animals cannot live in those areas. And then also the thermophiles live in extreme heat. So they love heat and they're able to live in those places that a lot of other organisms can't. Our bacteria, you guys know about bacteria. We always think of bacteria as bad, the types of things that gets us sick. However, there's a lot of bacteria that's good for us, that is in our stomach, that's in our digestive system, that's in our mouth. And this bacteria can help us digest food, break down food, and get nutrients out of it. Um, it's also in a lot of the foods we eat, like yogurt and milk. But then there's also bad bacteria, the type of bacteria that can get us sick. But we have these single-celled organisms all inside our body, good and bad. And bacteria are the smallest cells on Earth. Now, let's talk about our eukaryotes. I always tell my students, you are eukaryotic. You are made of many cells. And eukaryotes are multicellular, meaning many cells make up their bodies. They're made of many cells and they have a nucleus. All right, so let's go over the characteristics. Multicellular, so if it has two or more cells, we're looking at a eukaryotic organism. They have a nucleus, which is the brain of the cell. And if you look on those two cells, you can see the nucleus. It looks like the eye. It's what we call the brain of the cell. And you can see lots of organelles. They do have a membrane that is creating a separation from the inside of that organelle and the outside where the cytoplasm is. Our two types of prokaryotes, we have plants and plant cells are a little bit different than animal cells. And in another video, we're gonna talk about what are the key differences between plant and animal cells. But these two types of cells, you can see they have a lot in common and then they have a lot that's different. The first thing I notice is the shape of them is different. With plants, we have more of a rectangular box-like shape. We've got a cell wall. With animal cells, we've got more of a rounded cell and no cell wall. But both of these things share a lot of things in common, which is that they make up multicellular organisms. Both of these types of cells include that nucleus, the brain or central command post of the cell, and then they all have membrane bound organelles. All right, here's what I want y'all to do now. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to compare and contrast. Comparing and contrast, we often use a thinking map, and some of y'all call this a double bubble or a Venn diagram. And what I want y'all to do is you're going to go in to your Google Doc, if you've been assigned this by your teacher, and you're going to create this double bubble thinking map. And we know that when we use one of these, we put two items on either side of this double bubble. We're gonna put prokaryotes on the left, and eukaryotes on the right. We're gonna talk about what things they have that are not the same, so what are their differences, and those will go on the two sides. But then we're going to see that middle overlapping part, and that's where we're gonna put our similarities. What are the things that these have in common? What are those characteristics that are the same for both? And, this will be a great way for you to start distinguishing, differentiating those common things that they have in common that are alike and the things that are different for our prokaryotes and our eukaryotes. While we're doing our double bubble, let's also go ahead and put in our two types of prokaryotes in the Venn diagram 
And let's also include our two types of eukaryotes so that we can make sure that we're starting to remember which one falls into each category. And remember, this is a good way to keep this in mind. You, as a human, are eukaryotic. You're multicellular. You have many um, cells. You have membrane mount organelles. And you have a nucleus that makes up your animal cells. So. I hope that this has helped you start to get an introduction to cells. We're going to dive deeper into the differences between plant and animal cells in my next video. And then we're going to start discussing all of the organelles that are in our animal cells as eukaryotes and what each one does for our body. So like and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, happy teaching, and I'll see you in the virtual classroom.